Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. We greet the brethren with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the brethren to open. We're going to read two small texts in the word of the Lord. One is Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 46. Matthew 24. And then The children are opening the word to read here. Ready. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. Matthew 24, 46 says the following. Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler of all his goods. And Joshua, Joshua 1, 6, 6 says the following. Be strong and of good courage, for to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore, swore to their fathers to give them. Lord, we praise your name. Now we ask that you apply your word to our hearts. Give us a blessing. We pray in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. The Lord tonight, he wants to deal with us about a topic that is very important. It speaks about vigilance. <coughs> and when we speak about vigilance, it is a topic that we might say it's a very extensive topic. Even, you can even say complex. Because there are many ways for which we need to be vigilant vigilant about. The Lord here on verse 46 of Matthew, he speaks about the blessings of the one who, whom, when the Lord comes, will meet him serving in that way. My brethren, we have learned from the Lord and in the last few few days, we can even say have learned many things on on Sunday school last year that increased our faith and added to our spiritual lives. And in all the time in the teaching, the Lord has shown to us that it is, he is very close for, for uh, to his return, our victory. It is very close first to enter into the promised land, to inherit from the Lord the blessing of going to live and dwell in eternity. And it is very interesting that in the last few months, we have been studying the book of Joshua, and we see all the preparation to be according to the instructions of the Lord, how it should take place, the entrance into the promised land, who should be going ahead, in what way it would happen, how they would behave, and all those things the Lord has instructed us on. We have learned from the Lord how to behave, 
how to participate on God's kingdom. And tonight was very interesting because the Lord and the pastor will even share with you the, the spiritual gift, but the Lord was thinking about a call for us to be vigilant, to be, to be paying attention, to observe the details, small details. And when we speak about details, we see that the kingdom, the Lord is like this, has details. And the Lord is calling us, has called us at one point in time for us to be a part of this, of his kingdom with a few particularities. Not all of us have been called to be here. We have not been called in the same way. A few have been called to do one thing, play a role instead of the kingdom of the Lord, and others have been called to do other things in a way that everything that should work in a proper way. So there is inside of the church a care with the children. There is a special care with the elderly, with the uh, women. You may not even notice but there is a special care with the, the man of course oh, but there are no orientations no there is a care from the Lord to the man of the house of the Lord the Lord has instituted the deacons the anointed the pastor a group that is responsible for the praise of the house of the Lord the Lord has instituted a group that plays instruments in the house of the Lord, somebody that is responsible, that will lay the service to the ones that are unable to come here present, presently, they can see it from afar. How many times have we heard testimony of people? There are people that give assistance to people that are far away, sometimes even in far away countries, and they watch our services. So there is a concern. And there are great concern that is of everyone, but a few are even more concerned, which is prayer. There are those brethren here that pay a price so that the kingdom of the, the Lord may walk forward. They pay a price. And the Lord has called us tonight for this moment in which we are living. We're close, we're very close to enter into the heavenly dwellings. And it is very normal for us to be sometimes discouraged. The trial may come, it's not easy. But the Lord gives us advices. Yet gives us advices. And the advice that the Lord gave to Joshua was the following. Don't be surprised. You will see things that are going to be difficult. You will feel like running away. You, you will feel like escaping. But Joshua, I am with you. And this instruction the Lord gave to Joshua that we spoke about here, the Lord has spoken to us. The Lord is saying, my servant, I am with you. And my brethren, there are people out there that for many reasons and circumstances may have not heard about the Lord. And it, it is interesting, sometimes you ask a person, you know who Jesus is? And they say, oh yes, I know. Of course I know. And Jesus was that man, this and that, that acted in that way and that other way. You know who God is? Yes, I know, of course. But now, can you say to that person that you had an experience with the Lord? He's going to say, that this guy is not really not doing well on, on his uh, sanity. Is he speaking with Jesus? Many are like this. They don't know the Lord. 
they heard about a man that came here to earth and there are people a few days ago I was speaking to a person and there are people that don't know to this day the purpose of Jesus coming here did you know that there are people that do not know the purpose of Jesus coming to this world and when the Lord call us tonight to be vigilant it is just so that we can be paying attention because there are people out there the Lord wants to take to take out of this world in the last hour the Lord wants us to be with him in eternity the Lord wants these people there are out there he wants to bring them to a better place and we are the ones who have to tell them this there is all this vigilance but the vigilance also that the Lord is calling for is so that we can do his work and do his will what the Lord has prepared the people the Lord places ahead of us uh, every day and many times it's difficult to speak with people especially about the Lord I remember a pastor, a uh, friend of ours, and he was sharing an experience where he was taking the elevator to come to the service, to church service, and he would go down. And at that time, always a, a neighbor would come in the elevator with him. And their topic was always like this, hey, good night. Their conversation was always like this. He said that the man was very tall, very strong. And the Lord told that friend of mine, you're going to speak with him about my love. <coughs> you're going to speak to him that I love him also and that I have a blessing for him. And he said to the Lord, Lord, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard because... This man is going to beat me up and I won't be, won't be able to run away because I won't meet him inside of the elevator. And I don't know how am I going to deal with it. And I remember that at a certain time the Lord spoke to him. He was telling us, sharing with us this experience. And he said, today is a day in which you're going to speak to him about this love. And he already knew this man from you, from taking the elevator with him for several months so when he came to the elevator came to this man's floor he entered and he was sh telling us that uh, he was looking around at the elevator because I want to find the place the best place for me to fall because this man is going to hit me I want to see what will be the best side for me to fall but he f followed the orders of the Lord and the result of this obedience was that man when he heard those words he cried and he said to them the following have been waiting for so long for you to invite me I have a, an incredible desire I admire you your family I have an incredible desire to go to your church but you never invited me And at that night he cried and um, my friend prayed for him and that man received a blessing. And so my brother, when the Lord speaks to Joshua, do not be afraid or be surprised. Because from that point forward, the Lord was going to operate. The Lord was going to open, open up the Jordan River the Lord was going to win the battles for him, for them. And what the Lord, the only thing that the Lord asked was for them to serve him. Do what I ask. Behave in that way. And the result, my brethren, we see in the battles that Israel fought. Israel would fight battles. when we read the battle against Jericho humanly speaking it would be impossible to defeat Jericho 
very difficult. With all the situation, we sent spies, spies there to see, and the answer to this, the information that the spies bring, they bring to Joshua. They Joshua asks, what is the situation there? And he said, no, it's not easy. You can even say that this is the second return. The first time they went, those youth, Joshua was one amongst them, and they returned to Israel when Moses was still the leader of the people, and the brethren know the result. Now, the second time, the spies go, and now they return, and they say, it's difficult. There is the, the walls of the city, they are so wide that there are houses on top of the, wa the walls. It's not going to be easy. And do you think that Joshua was worried about about it? Joshua, do you think that Joshua told God, oh, Joshua, uh, God, the walls are too thick. We need to f f try to invade another city. No, Joshua spoke to God and God explained what they needed to do. They needed to uh, march around the city. They had to bring tor torches on the vessels. And the Lord said, "You, I'm going to give you the victory. And when they followed the instruction of the Lord, the victory was given. We know about this experience. If we gave opportunity for each brother to stand up and to say, hey, the Lord gave a victory because the fasting that I that I did. And the Lord gave a victory in the early dawn service that I came here. The Lord gave a, a victory in this way, in that way. We are walking into the promised land and we are receiving the victories from the Lord. But we receive victories as we observe, we pay attention in what the Lord wants from us. The instructions the Lord is giving us, what the Lord is telling us. And it's not going to be always easy to come on early dawn service. Sometimes you slide down your bedroom, right? In your, uh, slide down your bed. Sometimes to do a fasting, uh, a breakfast that somebody offered you at that moment, and but you fasting. This breakfast that they offered you, oh, but it's 15 minutes for us to finish our, our fasting. They're going to offer you the best breakfast. And it's free. You don't have to pay for it. It's more or less like this. But the word says, blessed are you if the Lord comes and finds the servants behaving that way. Amen. And in other situations, I'm going to see difficult situations like in Jericho. It was not possible for us to, to destroy the walls. Throwing stones against the wall would not do anything. Or having a large army. Israel was a numerous people. The ba men of ma battle were uh, courageous men. But it was not possible for us to go against the gate of Jericho and throw stones and try to use brute force because they would die at the walls. But it was worth serving the Lord. It was worth following the instructions of the Lord. And that's how the people, the peoples of that time knew Israel. The Bible says that the kings of that land, they heard of what Israel was doing before the Jordan River. Jordan River. And when the kings heard that the Jewish people uh, destroyed the walls of Jericho and they defeated Jericho, imagine if you were king of a neighboring city. If I was a kid, I would, I would try to become a friend of Israel because there would not be any other solution. I would convert. <laughs> I would convert to Judaism. Uh, there would not be no other way. And the Lord, he operated a great victory in the same way that the Lord has operated in our midst and he wants to do more. The Lord has called you for this tonight, to be vigilant, to be paying attention, because 
the numbers they can they don't need to be fulfilled uh, of the saved they do not be fulfilled the lord is uh, asking us to be vigilant at a one point in, in time the lord asked the, the disciples to to pray and be vigilant and when he when he returns the disciples were sleeping and it is part of our nature to do something like that but my brethren it is worth for us to serve the lord it's worth for us to obey the Lord and see the victory that the Lord operates. It is worth it. It is worth for us to rejoice in the Lord. It is worth for us to be at God's feet. There's a song. You don't need to play it, but there's a song that we sang before. The best, the best place in the world. And the, the lyric says that it is at God's feet, at the feet of our Savior. With all the things that exist in the world, the best, the best place in the world is at the feet of our Savior. Because the Lord will overcome our battles. Let us sing a song.
want to praise you, Lord, for all the good things that you have done for us. That's why we're here standing in this place to offer you our praise, our gratitude, and especially, Lord, because you have sustained us in your presence for a great love, Lord, for the healings that you have operated in the midst of your people. Lord, we thank you because we, we, cannot, we should only look to you, Lord. We thank you for everything you have done for us. And for everything that you ought to do for your people, Lord. We really thank you in the holy Amen. name of Jesus. And the Lord was showing a vision. And in this vision, we had a responsibility of being protecting a tower uh, uh, for vigilance inside of a headquarter. It was interesting that we all have, have our own spot for us to be as soldiers, vigilant. And the general, the headquarter, he would go personally to each of the towers to do a, how can I say, to do an inspection. He do an inspection to see to see the situation of each one of the soldiers that are working on their shift. And he found a few of the soldiers that were sleeping and others who were paying attention. The ones who were paying attention, they received a medal, a silver medal. Like if it was an honor for their a reward for their behavior and others the ones who were sleeping they were taken to the prison and the message speaks about this that we need to be vigilant we need to pay attention obeying the lord and listening to the voice of the lord and we leave a moment today in which the church <coughs> is a moment that we're we're close to the end we're fighting a battle the gospel we live in this way no one came to the gospel thinking that they were going to have like a good life. Jesus never deceived us. In the world, we have afflictions. But be of good cheer. So we, we need to let go of the things of the world out there. And we need to play our role. We are warriors. Isn't it true? We are all warriors. We find we fight a constant battle, and this we will only win on this battle if we are linked to the headquarter. A soldier who is in a battle without knowing what is going on, he will die. There's no way other way. But if he is not trained, and if he does not put him to practice the training that he has received. He is an easy prey to the enemy. The enemy is out there waiting to, for, uh, for us to give a falter in our step or raise our head. And in the same way, the enemy is like this. He is waiting for us to make a mistake. So this is a spiritual gift of the Lord. What awaits us is this, is a recognition, not a recognition from man, but a recognition from the Lord. You see, Vamada speaks exactly about salvation of man. Speak, the silver speaks about redemption and the matter that we are going to receive when we come to the end of our spiritual walk. But the ones who are living the gospel in a reckless way, dealing with uh, spiritual things, in a reckless way, they will be taken away. They will be imprisoned. What is what is what is the prison speaks about here? It speaks about suffering, the anguish. And who is listening to the voice of the Lord will be recognized by the Lord, the General, the Lord Himself. Amen. So here is the spiritual gift from teaching from the part of the Lord. Let's not give gospel like many are living out there. 
as if a genuine gospel, the one that was left for God for us, the one that Jesus had relayed to his di disciples, the primitive church. That's what he has for us. This modern gospel that brings the things of the world inside of the church, this is very dangerous, my brethren. This is extremely dangerous. It is not possible for us to be inside of the church and serving the Lord in this gospel and allowing the things of the world surreptitiously enter into our hearts. It is This is what it is to not be paying attention and sleeping spiritually. <coughs> Amen. Let's pray, bringing the service to close. If Pastor Sabra wants to say anything else, the other ushers and deacons who are there. It is the teaching from the Lord. Teaching of the Lord for us tonight, the service, for this year, for our entire life. We need to be paying attention to the voice of the commander, the general, who is the Lord. Let's bring this after close. Lord, receive the service and that your word, the gift that you gave, the direction of your spirit, Lord, may be speaking to our hearts and that we may position ourselves geared towards you, Lord, and that our ears may be open, Lord, and that our hearts may be completely open so that your spirit may make a dwelling in our hearts, remove any doubt, any incredulity, the lack of faith, the mistrust, Lord, remove everything and make us live the gospel according to what you want for us, that you have for us, and that we may have our hearts open for what is your word, and that we may live it according to your will. Lord, give us a night of rest, and tomorrow, service tomorrow, and the service at night, that we may also hear your voice once again. It's the prayer that we say, I really thank you in the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. The brethren who are with us in Zoom, we're coming to the end of the service. I have a couple of ushers and deacons here at your disposal to give assistance if you need a prayer. I uh, want to wish everyone in Zoom with the peace of the Lord. And in the church, if you need a prayer, we're here, available to you. Just raise your hand, and we will be giving assistance to the church. And tomorrow morning, I have a Sunday school. Sunday school, here in the church, in presence. And at night, once again, 7.30, amen. And I wish everyone the peace of the Lord. <coughs>